iPhone runs OS 10. Yeah. Now, why, why would we want to run such a sophisticated operating system on a mobile device? Well, because it's got everything we need. It's got multitasking. It's got the best networking. It already knows how to power manage. We've been doing this on mobile computers for years. It's got awesome security. And to write apps, it's got everything from Coco and the graphics, and it's got core animation built in, and it's got the audio and video that OS X is famous for. It's got all the stuff we want, and it's built right in to iPhone. And that has let us create desktop class applications and networking, right? Not the crippled stuff that you find on most phones. This is real desktop class applications. Now, you know, one of the pioneers of our industry, Alan Kay, has had a lot of great quotes throughout the years. And I ran across one of them recently that explains how we look at this, explains why we go about doing things the way we do, because we love software. And here's the quote. People who are really serious about software should make their own hardware. You know? Alan said this 30 years ago. And this is how we feel about it. And so we're bringing breakthrough software to a mobile device for the first time. It's five years ahead of anything on any other phone. The second thing we're doing is we're learning from the iPod, syncing with iTunes. You know, we're going to ship our 100 millionth iPod this year, and that's a, tens of millions of people that know how to sync these devices with their PCs or Mac and sync all of their media right onto their iPod, right? So you just drop your iPod in and it automatically syncs. You're going to do the same thing with iPhone. It automatically syncs to your PC or Mac right through iTunes. And iTunes is going to sync all your media onto your iPhone, your music, your audiobooks, podcasts, movies, TV shows, music videos, but it also syncs a ton of data. Your contacts, your calendars, and your photos, which you can get on your iPod today, your notes, your, your bookmarks from your web browser, your email accounts, your whole email setup, all that stuff can be moved over to iPhone completely automatically. It's really nice. And we do it, we do it through iTunes. Again, you go to iTunes and you set it up, just like you'd set up an iPod or an Apple TV. And you set up what you want synced to your iPhone. And it's just like an iPod. Charge and sync. So sync with iTunes. Third thing I want to talk about a little is design. We've designed something wonderful for your hand. Just wonderful. And this is what it looks like. It's got a three and a half inch screen on it. It's really big. And it's the highest resolution screen we've ever shipped. It's 160 pixels per inch highest we've ever shipped. It's gorgeous. And on the front, there's only one button down there. We call it the home button. It takes you home from wherever you are. And that's it. Let's take a look at the side. It's really thin. It's thinner than any smartphone out there at 11.6 millimeters. Thinner than the Q, thinner than the Blackjack, thinner than all of them. It's really nice. And we've got some controls on the side. We've got a little switch for ring and silent. We've got a volume up and down control. Let's look at the back. On the back, the biggest thing of note is we got a two megapixel camera built right in. The other side, and we're back on the front. So let's take a look at the top now. We've got a headset jack, three and a half millimeter, all your iPod headphones fit right in. We've got a place, a little tray for your SIM card, and we've got one switch for sleep and wake. Just push it to go to sleep, push it to wake up. Let's take a look at the bottom. We've got a speaker, we've got a microphone, and we've got our 30-pin iPod connector. So that's the bottom. Now, we've also got some stuff you can't see. We've got three really advanced sensors built into this phone. The first one is a proximity sensor. It senses when physical objects get close. So when you bring iPhone up to your ear, take a phone call, it turns off the display, and it turns off the touch sensor instantly. Well, why do you want to do that? Well, one, to save battery, but two, so you don't get spurious inputs from your face into the touchscreen. Just automatically turns them off, take it away, boom, it's back on. 
So it's got a proximity sensor built in. It's got an ambient light sensor as well. We sense the ambient lighting conditions and adjust the brightness of the display to match the ambient lighting conditions. Again, better user experience saves power. And the third thing we've got is an accelerometer so that we can tell when you switch from portrait to landscape. It's pretty cool. I'll show it to you in a minute. So three advanced sensors built in. 